So we have two equations, and they look kind of similar, right? Uh, we have this equation here and this equation here. They have the same variable, x, and the same number uh, numbers, 2 and 7, but of course the arrangement is a little bit different. But my question to you is, what's the difference? What's the difference between these two equations? There's actually a big difference between these two equations, and uh, not only uh, do they have different names, how we solve them is going to be uh, quite different as well. So if you know the difference uh, between these two equations, go to put that in the comments section. You know, better yet, if you know how to solve, put your uh, solve these equations, put your answer, your solutions for these equations in there as well. But I'm going to go over specifically what type of equation this is, what type of an equation this is, and how to solve each of these. Because when you're looking at equations in algebra, you have to recognize, uh, you know, you can't solve something unless you, you know, recognize what type of equation it is. And, you know, equations like this, they look similar. But you can have equations that look kind of similar to one another, but they could be completely different, and that's the case here. So I'm going to get into the, uh, precisely what to do with these two equations in just one second. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go down here and just define what type of equations we're dealing with. So this first one, x squared, okay, is equal to seven. This is a quadratic equation, okay? Now, why it's a quadratic equation? Well, effectively, this little x is what we call a polynomial. It's a real basic polynomial, but it's a degree two polynomial. It's a degree two polynomial and by definition that means it's a quadratic equation so the variable um, x is in the base okay where the base is at whereas this one it, the the x is in a different position so i'll talk about this in a second but what do we know about qu uh, quadratic equations well when you have a polynomial to whatever degree it is in this case uh, quadratic equations are degree two this means that this has two solutions okay so quadratic equations always have two solutions. So if uh, if you recognize this as a quadratic equation and you knew that you were looking for two answers, very, very good. Matter of fact, I'll give you a little happy face for uh, getting that correct. Okay, so let's talk about this equation right here. We want to uh, go ahead and describe this as an exponential equation, okay? An exponential equation. Now let's talk about um, powers, okay? So if I have two to the third power, I say this as two to the third power. This is the base, but this little number up here is called the exponent, okay? This is the exponent. This bigger number down here is the base. So you can see this little x, our unknown value, is in the exponent's location. So we're solving for the unknown value of the exponent here, okay? So we're looking for two to some power is equal to seven, right? This is a completely different situation. They look similar, completely different situa situation. And the way we approach solving this is completely different to the way we uh, solve exponential equations. But that's what this is right here. Now, I'm curious, how do you uh, solve exponential equations? Okay, what do you use? And I'll give you a little bit of a hint. It starts with an L, okay, an L. What do we use to solve exponential equations. Again, it starts with an L. So if you're like, oh yeah, I think it's this, well, put that in the comment section. See how you're competing with your fellow um, YouTubers watching this video. All right, so now let's go ahead and get into actually solving these two equations. They're not that difficult, but again, uh, completely different. So let's uh, focus over here first. We'll get to this in a second. So we have x squared is equal to seven. Again, this is a quadratic equation. It's very, very easy to solve quadratic equations when they're in this form. All I need to do is literally just take the square root of both sides of the equation. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 7 is, uh, we want to put in that positive and negative 7. Okay, very, very important that you put in this positive and negative because uh, one solution, x, our first solution is going to be a positive square root of 7, and our second solution is going to be a negative square root of 7. So, for example, let's just make sure, let's drive this point home a little bit more thoroughly here. x squared is equal to 9. Okay, so, oh, that's a quadratic equation. 
take the square root of both sides. So x is going to be equal to positive and negative 3. Because a positive 3 times a positive 3 is a positive 9. That's what I had right there. And negative 3 times a negative 3 is also a positive 9. So this is where this positive and negative business comes from. You always got to put that in. When you're taking the square root of a positive real number like this, always put that positive and negative in. If you fail to do that and you just said x is equal to 7, uh, your teacher would tick off some points and then you would have this kind of expression. You'd be like, hmm, you'd probably be a little angry. And he'd be like, what are you talking about? That's right. Well, no, you only gave me half of the answer. you got to give me all of the answer. Okay, so quadratic equation, if you got that correct, you know, both the positive and negative as well, then that's excellent. Okay. All right, now let's talk about this one over here. This is a little bit more involved. Uh, this type of equation you would study in your basic algebra one type course, maybe even pre-algebra. But this type of equation right here, an exponential equation, is something typically you'll start seeing like in Algebra 2, certainly like pre-calculus and whatnot. And I asked you, what do we use to solve exponential equations? And it started with an L. Well, you use logarithms, okay? Logarithms. And that's what you use. If you got that right, outstanding. Now, I'm just going to show you how to solve this uh, very quickly, but I would have to go into like a full, like multiple lessons to really teach you all about logarithms and, and the relationship between exponential functions. But very briefly, exponential functions, they're the inverse of an exponential function is a logarithmic function, and the inverse of a logarithmic function is an exponential function. So again, I have, a, I have multiple... Uh, other uh, videos on this in my, uh, uh, I believe it's in my Algebra 2 playlist on my YouTube channel, or Pre-Calculus playlist. Again, I teach this thoroughly in any one of my Algebra 2 or Pre-Calculus courses. So if you're at uh, any one of those levels or college algebra, you can really learn this thoroughly if you want to get into uh, one of my, um, you know, enroll one of my full courses. But let's get into this now. So 2 to the x power is equal to 7. Let's just really quick dissect this. Here's the solution, but I want to take this a step further, okay? 2 to the x uh, power is equal to 7. So how can we just try to guess the answer here, okay? Let me go down here, erase this, because I want you to walk away with a basic appreciation of logarithms as well. So I'm like, okay, 2 to some power is 7. Well, let's just start putting numbers in here. 2 to the first power is just 2, right? Uh, 2 squared is, uh, what, 2 times 2, that's going to be 4, okay? So 2 squared, that's 4. So, well, I need 2 to some power is equal to 7. Well, 2 squared is equal to 4. i got to keep going. How about 2 cubed? Well, that means, what, 2 times 2 times 2. So 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, okay? So now let's take a look at that. 2 cubed is equal to 8. But I want 2 to some power is equal to 7. Well, here, I went too big, okay? Uh, I want 2 to some, actually, let's write it this way. 2 to the x is equal to 7. 2 cubed is equal to 8. So I'm thinking, hmm, my answer has got to be somewhere between 2 and 3 because uh, 7 is greater than 4, but it's less than 8. So it looks like it'll probably be closer to 3. So if I was to guess what this power might be, it might be like a 2.7, something like that, right? So, but how do we find that precise exact value? Well, this is the power of logarithms, right? The logarithms are incredibly important. And back in the good old days, old school math, like for me, back in the 80s, 70s or whatnot, when you uh, learned this stuff, when you had like an Algebra 2 course, in the back of the um, book, they had actual tables, logarithm tables you would actually look, look up. That was kind of before there was a lot of calculators out there. There was calculators, but you know some students couldn't use them, and the books would have these tables. I'm pretty sure today it's pretty rare to see a logarithm or trigonometric values in tables. Yeah, they're still kind of out there, but not all that common. So you do need your calculators to solve this uh, problem. But anyways, that's the objective here. We're trying to find 2 to some power is equal to 7, and we already talked about this x is going to be somewhere between 2 and 3. But how do we solve this? Well, what we're going to do is take the log of both sides, L-O-G, common logarithm. Again, this is not going to be a full lesson on logarithms. I just want to show you the difference between these two equations, two equations here. 
So what I can uh, do at this point is uh, use the property of logarithms to take this x and drop it down in front of this log, just like this. Okay, so this is a property. So it leaves me with x times log 2 is equal to log 7. Now, if you went into your calculator and just uh, hit that LOG button, 2 and LOG 7, these are just going to be like decimal values. So if I want to solve for x, and that's what I'm trying to do here, I can just simply divide both sides of the equation by LOG2, just like this, and I get this as my answer. So X is equal to LOG2 divided by, L, uh, sorry, LOG7 divided by LOG2, and this would give me the exact um, answer to this formula, which again is going to be two points, something or the other. I haven't done those uh, calculations in here, but you know, just by guesstimating using kind of common sense, you could see. Uh, where its value is going to lie. All right, you shouldn't get something like x is equal to 9.5 or, or whatnot. But this is the value of logarithms. You got to learn how to use logarithms. And there's natural logarithms. There's different. Uh, there's a. This is a huge topic in mathematics right here. But you can't learn this stuff until you've mastered quadratic equations. But more importantly, I think the bigger uh, picture. By the way, too, if you let me just. Uh, I don't want to leave you hanging if you got both of these problems right and you knew everything about this then i must go ahead and give you an awesome happy face with a good old 1986 uh, flat top haircut an a plus and a 100 percent i'll give you a few extra stars just to make you feel a little extra special today nice job okay that just shows me that one or two things are happening Either you have a strong, great math teacher, or maybe you've been watching a lot of my YouTube videos. Who knows? But uh, nice job. But the big uh, point, okay, in this video is when you're studying mathematics, okay, algebra, more advanced algebra, uh, algebra 2, college algebra, pre-calculus, you're going to see a lot of things that look similar but are completely different. And that's why when you're learning math, you can't learn it like halfway, okay, because as you accumulate more and more math skills and you're, you're challenged with more and more different complexities if you don't really really know something you're just going to be guessing and you know then it's just going to become too much you know you're basically going to implode with uh you know um you know being confused you're not going to know what you're doing so the way to learn math is to learn and master one skill at a time okay so hopefully you've mastered quadratic equations there's a lot to cover in this topic and then you moved on so eventually and two exponential and logarithmic equations. That's the way to learn math, one skill at a time. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.